Well folks, you can save enormous amounts of time with Turbo Repo and end-to-end -end tests. Today we're going to be looking at Playwright, which is an end-to-end -end test framework from Microsoft. We're going to be integrating Playwright into Next.js, into a Turbo Repo, and putting it up on GitHub Actions. Let's go. Let me show you what I've got so far. I've run npx create turbo, and I've got myself an apps web. I've got some packages here, including a UI package, a TS config package. If you've seen any of these videos before, you know the drill. From the root, I'm going to run turbo dev. And that is going to run next dev, which is inside the package.json for my web app just here. That then shows my website on localhost 3000. And we can see it's just a website with my website on it and a little boop button. I have built, uh, as unnecessary as it may be, I have built a end-to-end -end test suite, which is going to test this website and make sure that our boop button is showing as boop. Here, I've done something interesting which is the end-to-end -end tests are not inside apps web. They're actually in a package in a totally different workspace from apps web. They're inside packages web tests. Our tests are all inside tests here, such as they are. And we have index.test.ts, which just checks if the home page has a button on it. So we're calling page get by role button, and it has to have a name of boop in there. And we expect the button to be visible. We can run these by running playwright test just here. And I've got this set up here to dev test. And at the moment, as you see, it's looking at localhost 3000, which we know is already running. So we should just be able to run this. I've also added dev test to my turbo.json, which is in the root. So I should be able to just open up a new panel here. Oh, it's getting a bit cramped and run turbo dev test. And that's going to run my end to end tests. And as you can see, they run pretty quickly, actually. Playwright is pretty fast. It just looks at localhost 3000 and then just tests it. Let's make a change to these tests and see if we can get them to fail. Let's call it poop instead of boop instead. And now we're going to run turbo run or turbo dev test. And we'll see if this still works. It should, in theory, fail because it's not going to be able to find the button. And that button is not going to be visible. And indeed, it does fail. So that's great. We've got our tests working for dev mode, but I'm going to try and teach you a different method for running them on CI, which can give you some really crazy speed gains. Our current setup looks a bit like this, where we're running dev on one side and we're also running our end-to-end -end tests on the other side. That means we can make changes to either one of them and they will still be tested either way. Instead of that approach, on the CI, we're actually going to build the app first, and then we're going to, at the same time, preview the built app and run the end-to-end -end tests on the built app. This is crucial because this process is actually a lot faster than starting up the dev server, and Turbo can actually cache the built app for us. I'll show you what that all means. We've got our build set up with Turbo Repo here. Inside the package.json for apps web, we've got build, next build. And inside Turbo on the root, we've got build and the outputs are .next star star. That means that when we run Turbo build like this, then it's actually going to just get the cached version from what we built last time. And I've shown you this trick before, but if we delete appsweb.next and just run Turbo build, then we get our 243 millisecond full Turbo build and we end up with .next being brought in from the cache. That means that this step is potentially now cacheable by Turbo Repo, which is great. But now we need to work out a way to run these two at the same time, because this preview built app that will run on localhost 3000 and then we'll run the E2E tests against it. This works by inside the package.json here inside web tests, we've got a script called start server and test. What this does is it starts a server, checks when the server is ready, and then runs a command based on that. Now, the command we're running is playwright test, which is, we saw that earlier, which is the same as dev test. We're checking that localhost 3000 is ready, and the command we're running is to cd up into the web directory and run npm run start in there. And what that is going to do is actually run next start. And what that command does is it runs against the built app. So it just previews it instantly on localhost 3000. Now inside our turbo.json, we've got to be a bit clever. We've got our E2E test just here. And we're saying that it depends on the build from a package that it depends on. In other words, we need to do two things inside our package.json here, we need to declare that web, which is the name of our package just up here, that we depend on that. 
and also that when we run E2E test, we want to run build inside web before that happens. So this is how it looks. When we run E2E test inside here, we want to make sure that build has been run in here before that. That means that when we want to run our end-to-end -end tests, we can just go turbo E2E test like this. And it's going to run a few things. It's going to run web build first, going to create that build and then run E2E tests. You can see it's running next start, started server, and the tests are passed and everything's happy. Now, if I run this again and don't make any changes to the test, don't make any changes to the source code, I just run this again and I get caching on both steps, which is just crazy. That means that all of our steps are now cacheable. You can build the app, that's cacheable, and you can preview the build app and run the E2E test together, that's cacheable too. Now, the reason I've got this in separate packages is because if I make a change to web, then it makes sense to um, that web tests will also need to change, right? It will also need to rerun the test because the source code itself has changed. But if I just make a commit that changes the tests, then I don't actually want to rebuild my app again because nothing has changed in there. Let's try this out. Inside our tests here, we should be able to change this button to like my button and then change this down here. And now when we rerun Turbo E2E test again, we're going to see that the web actually like built instantly. So we got our built app instantly and you can see because it said one cached and then it only ran the E2E tests afterwards. So we can see here that we got a hit, cache hit replaying output. So that's amazing. We've saved basically like half the time of our tests just doing that. I also want to show you this on CI. I'm going to change this again to my great button, but I'm not actually going to run it locally. All I'm going to do is just commit to with a work in progress commit message and put it up. I've got a GitHub action up here, which is installing node, uh, installing pnpm, kind of installing uh, all the dependencies with a frozen lock file, installing playwright, and then running the CI command, which I've got defined here as turbo run build, e2e test, and lint. So just running everything all at once. Here's how it looks on GitHub itself. We can see it did pretty well because it only took 46 seconds. Uh, PNPM only takes like two seconds to install, which is crazy. The longest run is actually installing Chromium. And then we run PNPM run CI. So let's take a look at the output. We can see that web build was a cache miss, actually. That's kind of interesting. Uh, we got a couple of cache hits on UI Lint, and the whole thing took 17 seconds because it's all scheduled really quickly too. I've also set this up with Vercel's remote caching. So I've added the Turbo Token and Turbo Team so that you can actually get remote cache hits, cache hits from your CI. And there's an example in the docs if you want to check that out. That'll be in the description below. What I've just done is rerun this same job, and we're going to see if we can go just a little bit better than 46 seconds. Not bad, down to 34 seconds, and the fastest part of that is actually our CI run because it detected no changes and it just ran everything in 880 milliseconds. So this guarantees that our tests are running okay, that our linting is running okay, and that our build is working correctly. Crazy. So there you go. Those are my two cents about how you should be using end-to-end -end tests in your Turbo repo. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you subscribe. Like, we're going to be putting out loads and loads of stuff on the Vercel channel, and I'll see you soon.